Hello everyone and welcome to today's show. I'm sitting on what I assume to be the foundation of one of the old cabins that once stood on the property. I'm not sure what happened to it. I assume it was either burned down or torn down for whatever reason. But this is only one of two sites that I have on the property where there are actually physical remains of the, uh, the building that once stood there. I have no doubt that at one point in time there were several other home sites on the property, but for whatever reason they were torn down, dismantled, and moved off site, or possibly even burned down just to get rid of them. So there are no physical remains of the actual buildings left today. However, if you know what signs to look for, you can locate some of these old home sites even though there are no uh, physical remains of the structure itself left. So join me for today's show as we look at what some of the clues may be on the landscape to indicate the location of a home site when there are no physical traces of the structure actually left. So when you're searching for an old home site for which there are no physical remains left, uh, there are still some signs on the uh, landscape possibly to indicate where a cabin or an old house might have stood. Some of those are fairly obvious, uh, maybe something like an old roadbed. Uh, fences are also a good indication, although with fences you at least know possibly that someone ran livestock in an area. If you're looking for fencing around an old home site and you find some fencing in that regard, look for small areas that are fenced off. Uh, that's a little bit better of an indication that it might have actually been around an old home site uh, because they might have fenced off a dog lot or maybe a chicken pen. So you'll have some enclosures that may not be very large. And normally those would have occurred fairly close to a house or a cabin. So here's an example of one of the smaller fenced-in enclosures I was talking about. Uh, you can see the gate for entry. Uh, I'm sure you can't pick up the wire on this video, but it's probably about a 10 by 10 enclosure. Uh, the fencing probably has about a 2 inch by 4 inch mesh. This is actually standing probably within about 40 feet of where I know the uh, home was located here on the property. So. Uh, once again, if I had a guess, I would guess this is a dog pen. doesn't have a top, so probably not a chicken pen. But uh, not uncommon to find these kind of just out in the middle of nowhere as this one is. But uh, knowing what I know about the property, I, I know how close it was uh, located to the original home site. If you find a large depression in the ground, that's possibly a sign that an old outhouse was located there. You may not find the physical structure. Uh, but, you know, a fairly large hole in the ground may be the sign of where it actually stood at one point in time. That would have been located fairly close to the house or cabin uh, for obvious reasons. It is certainly not the most attractive thing to find, but another very good clue that there was an old home site, at least in the general vicinity, are trash piles. Um, back in the day before recycling or curbside pickup, people had to uh, deal with their own trash and a lot of times they would simply find a sinkhole or a deep gully, uh, some kind of feature like that, depression in the ground, and they would just throw their uh, trash or garbage in there. A lot of what you'll find in these are uh, glass jars, a lot of uh, aluminum cans, things like that. Uh, also pretty common, I'm looking at one right above me, is a node tire, uh, just anything like that that they needed to get rid of. They really had no other choice depending upon the time frame. Uh, this is on my property. It's actually probably about 150 feet from where I know that there was an old cabin that once stood. So uh, a lot of times they're not right up against the, uh, the living quarters, but they may be 100, 200 yards away. But generally, uh, they're in an area that was convenient for the folks to get to 
in order to uh, get rid of the refuse. Um, a lot of times these are then covered up at some point in time, bulldozed over, or at least some dirt um, piled over the, uh, the scrap pile. If you happen to find a, uh, a spring, a naturally flowing spring, folks obviously had to locate near water sources back in the day. So uh, see if there are any signs that someone may have had some piping, uh, build a wall to have a little catch basin, or even a rough uh, rock structure that might have served as a spring house. If you find any of those signs, it's a good indication that if not nearby the spring, that somewhere in the general area, uh, an old home site may be located. Another sign that you're near the location possibly of an old home site would be a large flat spot or at least a spot with a fairly gentle slope. This could possibly be the remains of an old garden spot which obviously just about anyone would have had back in the day. So even if you don't find any of the uh, signs that I just previously discussed, there's one final thing that you can look at that may lead you to know an area was once an old home site, even though there's no physical indication in any way to indicate that. And that is vegetation. So when you're looking at vegetation uh, for clues that an old home site may be located in a particular area, you're looking for plants that wouldn't naturally occur in that area. A good indication of this would be something like a fruit tree, an apple tree, pear tree, cherry tree, in general, just don't naturally appear uh, on the landscape. So if you find any uh, fruit trees, especially if you find them in mass where there are you know, several that might have been part of an orchard, uh, that's a pretty good indication that you probably had an old home site in the general area. Another vegetation indicator uh, that possibly may lead you to an old home site is the presence of a, a wolf tree. A wolf tree is basically a large, very limmy, spread out tree. Generally it's going to be uh, larger than most of the trees in the area. And a lot of times uh, folks kept a shade tree in their yard around an old cabin or a house. Uh, and once uh, they left, the woods may have encroached upon it. So that tree is going to be larger than the majority of other trees in the area in general. The other difference is going to be, like I said earlier, they're very limmy, branches spreading out from very close to the ground. They tend to be fairly bushy in appearance compared to the surrounding vegetation. In nature, are trees growing together in a forest are self-pruning, meaning that they're all growing fairly straight up, and as the trees shade each other in, the lower limbs are basically uh, shed. So the, the base of the tree tends to be fairly clear limbs and trees tend to grow taller and straighter. Because that wolf tree grew out in the yard and generally in the open, uh, they didn't have this uh, sunlight restriction. So the lower limbs are left in place. They just tend to spread out a lot more. And a lot of them could be fairly large in diameter. So here is an example of a wolf tree uh, this tree is located probably about 30 feet behind the stone wall that I'm sitting on during the video. Undoubtedly, this served as a shade tree uh, back in the day. So it's left here. Notice how limmy it is, limbs going almost from the bottom to the top. It's adjacent to what is obviously an old roadbed coming into the house site. So uh, I've seen them quite a bit larger, but this is typical. This is a, a maple tree, which was also a fairly common species that folks would have used for shade back in the day. So I am at a different home site. Uh, there is no structure remaining. But here's another example of a wolf tree. It's standing probably about 150 feet from where I know the home was. Uh, this is quite a bit larger than the first one. I think this is a hackberry tree. Actually, it had remains of an old deer stand in it uh, that was made out of wood, pretty much rotted and fallen out. I've since 
put a new deer stand on here, but uh, you can see how large this tree, how spreading it is as far as the limbs and branches go, the relative size uh, related to the rest of the much smaller trees in this area as well. So uh, a really classic example of a wolf tree. So historically, people have always liked to plant things around their house or home. Uh, no different now than it was then. So other things to look for from a vegetation standpoint uh, that don't appear to be there naturally would be things like raspberries. We do have some naturally occurring raspberries, but there's not a lot of them on the landscape. So if you're finding clumps of those, uh, that's possibly a good indication that you have an old home site. Uh, nearby. Privet is another common plant at an old home site. Uh, generally if I encounter some privet in the woods I, I immediately begin looking for some other physical uh, features that might lead me to an old home site. It was planted as a hedge. It's got a pretty flower and a very heavy fragrance uh, so it tends to be very common at an old home site. We don't see a lot of it planted in today's world. Uh, but for some reason, it, it was uh, a preferred plant back in the day. So flowers are another good indication uh, that you might have an old home site in the general area. Probably the number one giveaway of an old home site as far as flowers go are daffodils. They seem to have been planted at nearly every site that I've encountered. Uh, I probably have, if you've watched one of the earlier videos I've done, I have several locations of daffodils here on the site. Uh, Actually, there's a spot of daffodils here just off the, to the left of the camera to indicate uh, what I know is an old home site. So here on the property, one of the plants that I have my eyes out for, uh, because they've given the location of several old home sites away, are iris. I have probably six to eight patches of iris located uh, throughout the property. Uh, last year, I tried to keep up. And I think I counted six different colors. So as I prepared to end the video, it dawned on me I may have uh, failed to mention one other uh, potential clue to an old home site. And that is the location of a uh, graveyard. Uh, to my left, you can actually see an old grave marker. I'm going to refer to it as a marker rather than a stone because it's actually made out of metal. Uh, I think that's the only one I've ever seen made out of a metal, but obviously pretty old. And you would suspect that uh, a graveyard or a cemetery a lot of times may have been located fairly closely, not necessarily in direct proximity, but in the general area of an old home site. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Take care, and we'll see you next time.